Okay, and the thing to remember is that uh, we are filming this or videoing this. It's being streamed all over the country. It'll look just like a, just a blob. <laughs> what? Repeat full name. Um, hi, my name is John Kaminsky. Hi, my name is John Kaminsky. Um, I brought two things in tonight. One, I know exactly what it is. The other, I've been trying to find some information, so maybe you can help me. The first is something I acquired at Swatney. I've always liked these little Emerson portables, the early, earlier um, plastic ones, but I've never found one in good condition until now. And this is about as good as it gets. It's, the lid's not warped as they usually are. And it has the original box and the power supply. The only thing that could make it better is if it had the manual. I mean, there's like almost no scratches, and it's a little, this is the side of the box that was open, so it faded there, but every other side is almost like the day it left the factory. Um, I don't want to open it up right now, but let me see, um, 58A. And the other thing I wanted, I thought it was me, I got it at Columbus for 50 cents. Ooh. It was in the packaging and everything. I had to figure out how to set up the box. But I can't find anything on this. Um, Alec told me that there were some promotional items back at this time, but I have not been able to find anything. It was at the same table that I found a Philco TV for $5 at a briefcase model. Surprisingly, I got home and it worked. Well, that's it. So I actually have a little slide presentation first, and then we'll get to the radio. Oh, yes, Michael Whitman. <laughs> Professor Whitman. Yeah. Michael. Mike. Okay, so let me just get this going here first. So, could you move the dog for a minute? The, no, the, the, the dog. Can everybody see this here? Tom and Henry. Okay, so um, yeah. the date of this picture, so th there's a story that goes along with this. This is uh, the radio that I'm going to be talking about is this AR812. And the date of the radio is 1923. This radio has a little history with it. And it's, uh, it's, been, it's been a little bit of a detective. Uh, uh, I had to do a little detective work to figure out about the radio. It's really interesting. I bought it uh, about a month ago in Arkansas. Uh, I was hanging around. My daughter was at a Taekwondo meeting at Little Rock. Alex. And rather than spending the entire time at the convention center, I decided to go and look at the antique shops and found two radios, uh, this one and another one. Uh, so this image that you see here, everybody recognize the people in there? Is that you? Yeah, that's me. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I had hair. <laughs> okay, so the date is 1929. you. And it's uh, on the left is Thomas Edison. Uh, this is two years before he died, um, and it's the 50th anniversary of the light bulb. So in 1929, the light bulb was 1879. And behind him is Henry Ford. Now Henry, yeah, and the picture is taken in uh, Greenfield Village. Uh, in uh, Michigan. Greenfield Village is Henry Ford's uh, home, and he created a museum there. You may know it, the Greenfield Village. It's now called the Ford Museum. And that opened in 1933, and Ford uh, greatly admired uh, 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 Thomas Edison. 
and, uh, and he created the uh, museum really in his honor. Uh, behind the fellow to the right is, uh, is Francis Yale. Yale was an associate with Thomas Edison, um, and he wrote uh, a, a, a well-known set of books about Edison. It's called Menlo Park Reminiscences. And uh, so Yale was uh, worked closely with, uh, with Edison. And the picture at the left was a recreation of this, uh, the light bulb. And the one on the right is the same thing. What you see on, in the back here is you see Edison. It's hard to see it, but you see Edison and the light bulb. And this is Yale over here helping him. Uh, the recreation of what went on in 1879, which was in Menlo Park, which is, I guess it's near Edison, it's Edison New Jersey. Uh, Natasha, I guess. Is the area. Uh, and what Ford did is he, he dismantled the property and actually took it to Michigan. So if you want to see the original Menlo Park Labs, the so-called invention factory, you have to go to Michigan. I've never been there. I've only seen pictures. Cool. Now, now we come closer to the radio. So the date of this image, uh, and the, the radio at the bottom there is at the Henry Ford Museum. And the fellow on the left is Edwin Armstrong. Many of you know about Armstrong. Armstrong invented many of the great circuits that are important to radio. He did regeneration super regeneration, super heterodyne, and FM. Uh, and on his, the right is his wife, Marion. So uh, this is at his, uh, they were down in Florida, and uh, he uh, had a gift for his wife, and it was this portable radio. <laughs> <laughs> and it was super heterodyne. And the date was 1923. That date you'll see is important because it's, uh, it's, this is 24. It's, uh, it's very similar. Uh, okay, so that's Edwin Armstrong. Now, um, the, as I said, the radio at the bottom is at the Henry Ford Museum. Now, in 1995, there was an auction of the, the Ford Museum, and they auctioned off a lot of their radios that they had. They, and this is an antique radio classified. It said, it said the Henry Ford Museum Radio Auction Highlight. And in, there's an article that describes all these radios that they sold. And the radio that I uh, purchased down here is one of the radios from that auction. Uh, so uh, it was quite a fine. Now, also, we have to bring Sarnoff into this story, too, because the radio is an RCA radio, and we all know about that Sarnoff was responsible for really uh, getting RCA going. And this is a picture from 1929, the same year that the, the earlier uh, picture of Ford and uh, Edison was, and uh, Sarnoff was on the cover of Time magazine. And what we need to know here is that Marion, Armstrong's wife, was Sarnoff's secretary. Um, and at, in those days, both Sarnoff and Armstrong were good buddies. That didn't last their entire lives, as there's a whole story that goes along with that. Now, this is, the, the, uh, this is Harry Houck on the left and Edward, Edward Armstrong on the right. And what you see there on the far right in front of Armstrong is you see one of those radios. It's this AR-812, which was, I believe, the first commercial yes. super heterodyne uh, that, that RCA made. Uh, and, uh, and at the time that it came out, it was a great revolution because it was replacing regenerative sets, which had a tendency to squeal, and it had great uh, selectivity. And uh, when Armstrong showed it to Sarnoff, Sarnoff was so taken by it that they canceled all of the radios that they were dealing with at that time and switched the entire product line over to Super Heterodyne. And they also tried to keep it quiet. They didn't want to let people know what was the, uh, the circuit there. So it's actually hard to get schematics on it. Uh, the, if you look at the early service manuals, it's really hard to find the schematic. They're now available. So uh, there you see Armstrong and Houck, and this is my last image. And here you see an image, and this is, uh, I brought this image out because I thought it would be appropriate for this group, because it's roughly the same time as this picture was taken. It was sort of on the order of 24, 25. Um, and on the left here you see Professor uh, Edwin Howard Armstrong uh, uh, lecturing to the Radio Club of America. Okay, and he's and in the back, if you look on the circuit diagram that's on his blackboard, it looks like it's the regenerative circuit that's there. And in the front here is a loop antenna, 
as well as a horn speaker. So here's the loop antenna. So uh, you have these two images. You have Armstrong with his super heterodyne, and then you see him there with a, with a loop antenna. And now what I'm going to do is demonstrate that this radio is working. I, I hooked it up to, uh, uh, I have a little transmitter. So Walter's here, right, Walt? Huh? Yeah. Walt Heskey's? Right. Oh, okay. okay, so to start with, this, I have a little transmitter, which I have hooked up. Uh, I showed this before at, at a previous uh, uh, meeting. But this is a little, uh, it's a little set. Yeah, right, Walter? Yes. Yeah, it's, 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 it's you have that it also posted on the Internet somewhere? Yeah, it's, a, it's a, basically it's a 50L6 uh, used uh, as a, 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 a transmitter. Uh, you're, you're screen modulating it, and it uh, puts out about uh, a little less than a watt, maybe 300 mil, something like that. It's illegal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, you can match it. You know, the impedance is close. So this is an old radio show. I think this is... Uh, I think this is Jackie Gleason. That would be the right it's like, it's like Riley, <laughs> and it's uh, actually it was, there was this other fellow, William Bendix, I think. Yeah, yeah but William Bendix was sick, so they had announced that, and Jackie Gleason, who was doing the television version of Life with Riley, was brought in for the radio show. So this is actually Jackie Gleason. Good morning, Alice. But in any case, the, uh, the radio's got great selectivity. It sounds pretty. It sounds pretty good. Most of these sets tend not to work. I have another one, and it's the dreaded catacomb radio, right? So it's all, all of the parts are potted in beeswax. So if you have to work on the set, you got to melt out the beeswax. I haven't done that yet. Have you done that, Joe? Almost. The beeswax. What happens is after a time, it it uh, comes loose. And it, and it pulls all the uh, wires for the transformers and everything down with it. That's what happens. I say. And I'd say it's um, five times out of ten, uh, that's what the uh, a problem is after 83 years. But you're pretty uh, fortunate to have a working one. Do you know what those little tabs on the side are for? The tabs on the little round brass tabs, tabs on the dial? Oh, these. Yeah. Yes, okay. So, uh, Mark just asked about these uh, dials. So there are two station selectors. So, uh, one is the, it's the primary, uh, there's a tune circuit, uh, and this is the control. The one on the right is the control of the local oscillator, which is for the tuning, and the one on the left is a tune circuit. Uh, coming down on the antenna side. And what these these are <coughs> is there are labels. I should have mentioned this. Oh, by the way, I didn't mention how I know that it's it's from the, yeah. the uh, uh, from, from the auction. Uh, there are tags inside that indicate the uh, Edison Institute with yeah. property numbers on. Oh, that's interesting. And then, <laughs> and then there's a uh, there's an auctioneer's label. Um, Property information here. There's a there's a card. Uh, let's see. It identifies who the auctioner. The you know we the same way we do it. There's a buyer number associated with it. But the most important thing, and I got this from the uh, article on Antique Radio Classified, is they said for all of the radios that came out of that auction, there was a deaccession uh, tag, which is this one, which is uh, it's the uh, it's their internal inventory number that the Ford Museum used. And with, uh, on all of the items that they sold at, uh, at this auction. And so this, uh, I was absolutely certain when I saw this that it came out of that same, uh, that same auction. Oh, and then on these labels, I guess that's the question about the labels. This is really interesting. I know this one. I just, yeah. yeah. So there, the labels, they, uh, there's, uh, for you to mark your, the location of your station. Mm. And uh, there are the original labels here on the back. Oh. And, uh, it's written in pencil here. I have to get my glasses on. It's it's really cool. There's a, on the upper right here. It says KBKA. We all know about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. First, one of the first or the yeah. first radio station. Yeah. 
there's WABC, WOR is on the left, WTIC, and so on. And so there are about 10 stations that are indicated. And then there's, I have one for the right and one for the left, which are the ones that are apparently were there originally. So it was really quite a fun. I was really very pleased to have found the set and also track down about the to be upward. We left out that it's, it's a portable too. Oh, yeah. Thank you. This is somebody's idea of a bad joke, right? You, know, you take something that weighs 40 pounds and you slap a leather handle on it and you call it portable. Uh, it, it has built into it a, an internal loop antenna. Uh, so it, 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 there are, these are battery boxes on the left mm -hmm. and the right. Uh, and they're intended to hold uh, two B batteries on each side, mm. uh, and then the A batteries on the left. Mm. And it weighs about 40 pounds when it's full. Yes, Paul? Do you know what the IF uh, uh, you know, frequencies are on that thing? Is it it's, I think it's... Uh, I have to I think it's more 50. Uh, it couldn't be that high. Very low. Hang on a second. 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 No. Can you can you vary the distances between the primary and secondary coils in those IFs? Between and that the way? primary and the secondary, you know, he, he has everything's potted up. Everything's potted up. Oh, yeah. really it's all potted up in the beeswax. Oh, it's six one ninety nine tubes. Um, it doesn't say on the set of prints what the what the IF is. I guess they assume. Oh wait a minute. Uh, no, it doesn't say. They don't tell you. Of course, it's so low, you actually get stations in more than one place on the dial. Uh, yeah, that's probably the problem. And the common uh, um, IF at the time was um, uh, 45 kilohertz. Okay. That was the common. <laughs> <laughs> right. If you click something on the dial, where do you yeah. 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 You got images. Okay, are there oh, any other dial. questions? Oh, well, I'm just trying to think. Well, 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 that's well, that's well, a, uh, yes, now it's that's any other questions about the set? Yes. One thing. Um, do you, this isn't about the radio, but with the auction, do you know why they auctioned off a bunch of radios from a museum? <laughs> yeah, they, they. these were just, I was at that. The, these are radios that they, they need, well, first of all, it collect a lot of money, but they just felt that it wasn't, they weren't artifacts. That you, you could find them in other places, you know, they weren't like unique to the museum. Uh, I do remember that I believe a Marconi, you there, Ray, were you there? Uh, a Marconi, I wasn't there, but a Marconi 107 went for how much was that? Like about $50,000. $50, and uh, it really, all the pieces weren't there. I don't know if you know what a, a 107 yeah. is, very early battery related radio. Mm -hmm. But uh, there were a lot of people from uh, overseas mm -hmm. that really raised the prices on, on that. Yeah. What did that one sell for? This one, I picked this up for uh, for three eighty. Wow. 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 Uh, in the Antique Radio Classified article that they described, they, were, they listed some sample prices of what they went for. In some cases, they went for, you know, like factor two more than what was their going rate. In some cases, it was really quite reasonable. What was the year of that, the month of that? Uh, it was October 1995 was the auction. Do you know what that sold for? What is it? Oh, how much did the set went for? I could look it up. Oh, yeah, I should have mentioned that. There's this new book uh, that's just come out, the uh, Radiola book. Mm -hmm. it right over here. This is really worth it. Something you're going to sell. This just came out. Oh. Um, it's uh, Radiola, the Golden Age of RCA. Mm. And in it, uh, they have the full history of the. Mm. Uh, you know, starting with the first RCA sets right through. Mm -hmm. uh, and they have, uh, among other things, production numbers and what things sold for. Mm -hmm. I have to look it up. Uh, my guess is it's probably about $100 or something. <coughs> 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 the 6199 they're about 20 bucks a piece. There is 120 bucks already just for the tubes. That's it. And usually, yeah. no. Yeah. no. Yeah. If and you can find them. Usually when you buy these now, 
Yeah. For almost all of them, the 199s don't work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then if you gotta fix it, you gotta put three to four hundred dollars worth of work. Yeah. And you gotta get the blessing of your 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 uh, better half to stink up the house to get the catacomb out. So yeah. you know, to get a working one is like Pretty good. Yeah. No, I was very, I was very. Well, you, did you buy it? Working? <coughs> did it work? I didn't know that it worked. Now the other set I had, uh, I will say, I, the other set I had that I bought for twenty-five dollars in Florida, that was a terrible shape, but the uh, the uh, it had no tubes in it. I had to put tubes in it. Uh, but internally it was in pretty, it was pretty clean. I got that working for half an hour. Oh boy! And then it stopped. Boy, and I, I, you can, it, there's, uh, it's very easy to test where which transformer is gone because you can, uh, you can with a meter, with an ohmmeter, test out all of the different uh, primaries and secondaries, and it's just one one winding is gone. So I'll have to work on that. 27k resistor across the winding. Okay. Okay. That's the trick. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I forgot. Oh, by the way, I'm Sal Brasindi. Unfortunately, I forgot my laptop. Like Mike, I had a whole series of pictures on Dynaco. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. <laughs> anyway, um, I know this is an antique radio club. That's why I brought the tune in here because it has tunes and it's an FM tuner, so just to justify me, bring my my tune in. Anyway, Dynaco. 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 Anyway. Um, I was always, I'm always, I wasn't interested in uh, tube audio, and I've had some tube amps here and there, but I wanted a Dynaco system, so I finally went for a hunt, looking for one on eBay, and of course it kept missing, and bidding on, and they missed, and bidding on, and they missed, and so on and so forth. So there's a Craigslist out there. Anyone ever hear of Craigslist? Yeah. 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 Uh, it's not an auction. People just put things for sales for free. The, the, the ads are free. And uh, I did a search across the whole United States, and I found this in uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico. <laughs> Uh, and the guy asked me, how did you find this? Because, you know, you have to look state by state. Said, yeah, well, I looked state by state, town by town. Uh, he was asking 400 for it, just for the, uh, the amp itself. He was asking 400 for it, and I counted off, and they're like, how about 300? He says, I tell you what, we'll, we'll meet halfway, 350. Oh, by the way, hon, I paid only $25 for it. No. <laughs> 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 That's pretty good. No. Anyway, so we negotiated the price of 350 plus shipping, and, and it, it came to my house, and... Uh, it was working, uh, when I received it, it was working, but it had a hum, the usual hum and everything else. It was pretty much all original inside. Um, it has, uh, the, the two complement are uh, four uh, 68.7s or EL34s and 270, 199 uh, uh, preamp tubes, which is also the uh, face uh, splitter. Uh, those two tubes, the 7199s were USA branded tubes, but the other four tubes, the, uh, the uh, EL34s were softex from Russia. But they tested fine. Uh, I just pretty much I just recapped it. The, well, the good thing about the Dynaco is not a whole lot of capacitors. I mean, maybe ten of them, more or less. Uh, so it was really easy. Uh, I replaced all the caps on the, two, uh, on the board. Uh, they make reproduction uh, the, the electrolytic quad. They make reproductions for like thirty-five dollars. My mistake was if I do another one, which I'm going to do another one real soon. Uh, the original cap was a 30, 30, 20, 20, 20, microfarads. It's a quad. They have the same size capacitor, which is 80, 50, 30, 20, uh, which in 19, early, uh, early 60s, the 20 microfarad capacitor was probably okay. There wasn't a whole lot of bass out there in music. But if you place a lot of crap, my daughter listens, though. Uh, <laughs> you can hear it. The, the, it starts distorting on, on, the, on the bass. But it's a great sounding system. Uh, then I went for the, I told my buddy uh, at uh, 101.5 that I bought the Dynaco, and he says, hey, you want a pair of Dynaco speakers? Sure. So uh, uh, this was at the, uh, the studio where we picked up that old transmitter, that the, the, the BTA250L transmitter. And these things were hanging against the wall. As you can see, there's holes drilled all over the side. Even with racks in the back to mount them, they decided to drill holes all over the sides of the cabinet. Great sounding speaker, so I got those speakers, and then I, then I looked for the preamp. This is a 2, it's a 5.2 preamp, 4.12.87, and 1.12.4. Uh, this I found on Craigslist also. These normally go for anywhere from 175 to like 300. 
I found this on Craigslist for $59. Mm. Now, it was missing all 1287 school kids. I got a gazillion of them. Uh, and the uh, RCA jacks in the back are just all rusty. And the guy was telling me, oh, don't worry. Oh, don't worry about it. $59, I'll take it. Don't worry, you know. And uh, what I did was I, there's a voltage double circuit in here for the filaments. The filaments run on DC. So I just rebuilt that. Uh, I ordered all the capacitors. I didn't restore this one yet. I just bypassed one capacitor because uh, one channel was locking base. So uh, I did that. And it's working great. Uh, the uh, electrolytic in this guy does not need to be replaced. I mean, I thought was, the switch was broken. I turned off the switch, and it's still playing. And it's still playing. And it's still playing. Like, but the light went on. And then it started slowly fading and getting low. So that's fine. And I, I also, I, this is another, uh, I purchased the, uh, I want the whole dinosaur setup. And then I got the FM3 stereo tuner. I still have to restore this. It works, but I got to go through and replace everything on it. So, I mean, uh, the only good thing about having one dynamo system is having two of them. And I just, today, picked up a second SD70. So, uh, something else for me to do. But does it work? doesn't work. doesn't work. Can you prove it? Okay, we turned it off. The whole. Oh, see, you heard it. I don't know what song is playing. Here it is. Thank you. All right, I'll try to make this real quick. Bob Bennett, most of you know me. Um, Charlotte Instrument, that's kind of rare. This is probably my, my equivalent to uh, Richard Lee's bipolar fan from last year, so I'll, I'll explain. This is a Simpson 260, and I'm sure at least half of you have had one of these in your life. However, this is a Model 1. This is the very, very first uh, series of Simpson meters. And how it came about it was kind of weird. I was at my car swap meeting over in Englishtown down at the drag strip a few years ago, and I'm wandering around, and you know, you could, most of you have been there. You know, you're looking around for stuff. It doesn't matter if it's radio stuff, car stuff. So you're focused. Your mind is... Okay, you're looking, you're looking, you're looking. And I'm on the ground, you know, I'm going through, like, you know, motor mounts and transmissions, and I see this thing laying on the ground. It was dirty and ugly, and I just kind of put down one knee, and I look, and I wipe it off, and Simpson. So I'm looking around. Here's this guy coming out of a trailer, half his teeth missing. You know, sorry, he had about a 7th or 8th eight, Budweiser eight today. 9 o'clock in the morning. Excuse me, sir. How much for your meter? And we came to a number. He let me have it. I'll tell you about that in a second. Took it home, blew it apart. Found a date on the back of the, the meter itself. You couldn't see the meter. It was that bad. It was real, real dirty. Found a date of August 1945. Now, whether that was the actual manufacturing date, not really sure. However, I got it to work. It's point-to-point -point wiring. It's not a situation where you have, uh, you know, the circuit board. Like, the, like I had a 266P, which I had through college, and I probably traded for beer or car parts or something, and I wish I still had it. So uh, I can't really elaborate too much more on it other than uh, I had changed the battery holders. I had metal battery holders, and they were toast. So they came out, and I put in regular battery holders, and I was able to adjust the shunt, and it's, it's dead on accurate. About a month or so later after that, and got restored, I ran to Rich Scoba, who was literally my neighbor in the next town over, and he went on one of his hunts, and he goes around, goes to yard sales and flea markets, had this huge pile of books, and he found some old schematics, and long and sure of it, I'm helping him go through it, and then lo and behold, mint the manual for this meter. So I'm looking at it, I said, Rich, do you know what this is? He goes, no. I said, that's the manual for the meter I showed you last week. He says, take it. Okay. So, series one meter and the manual. Poultry sum of five bucks. Great. If my memory serves me correct, Rich, it's uh, double A's, but I don't remember how many. Is, it, is that right there? Are they around the perimeter? 
There's actually two different banks on, on either side. All the connectors original? Because I thought the original, I've seen some sense of media that have ten. The yeah. later one, I, I can't elaborate too much. The arrow would probably notice. What's that? Hold, hold the meter up for a second. Sure. Yeah, were those, are those pin jacks or those banana jacks? Those are pin jacks. The later ones have banana jacks. Oh, they are pin jacks. My 266P were bananas. Yeah, those, those are the original. What? Was it from Series 3 on that they used it, or 2? I don't remember, Darren. Uh, 1, 2 had pin jacks. I believe half the 3s were made with bananas. Yeah, I think that's about right when they made the change, so. Yeah. I thought they were bananas, too. No, that's the same. Yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Who's next? Oh. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Marty Friedman. Um, I got a couple of things I brought. a couple of times tonight. This is uh, mainly what I wanted to uh, show, but uh, first let's uh, go over this here. We have an auction tonight. There's some stuff over there we're going to get to. Uh, these are uh, items that were purchased at auction. You may recognize them. You may not. They're a little cleaner than they were. Uh, single generators. There were three of them a few months ago. Yes, I remember that. Uh, ICO 324s. They were a uh, choice. Dollar her was the bid. I took all three. <laughs> well, one of those. <laughs> then, last month, the first item on the uh, list was the missing Minerva. This is the missing Minerva. No cracks. Fully restored. Had no tubes. We'll just drape this wire here. <coughs> Player. <laughs> oh. like use one. Sal had something like that. Like a generation zero. This is uh, my old blue trinket that was given to me by the company. Four. Supposedly to take um, files from my computer back and forth. So I just took the MP3 player directly into the input. <laughs> there you go. And here we go.
But anyway, uh, dollars for the Minerva, dollars for the single generator, the MP3 player. And when all the radio stations go off the air, we can still listen to do something. <laughs> to me, a very large ferrite bar in there, and this actually works, I won't pick anything up in here, it's just noise, of course, but it, it's pretty sensitive and it uh, works very well, and it also had the original battery pack that was came with it. Obviously dead, but uh, they're mercury batteries. And uh, that's about it. Yeah. I just thought it was very interesting to me. Any any manufacturer or make? I don't see any manufacturer make. It's a telephone uh, break. The circuit break worn down by somebody. They had homebrew designs in the, the radio magazines and things like that <laughs> in the late 1950s. Any idea how old it is, though? What kind of transistors is it got? I have no idea. I mean, is it like, uh, like CK722s, or can you tell? 77. And there's a mix of them in here. It's a top hat also. <laughs> 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 Well, I got a good picture of it. It's best sign. Okay. Uh, about a month ago, I got a very cryptic uh, phone call from Ray Chase. Uh, about got about 12:30 when I got in, so I couldn't return his call. And basically, he said, "Hey, Marv, call me right away. I got an I got something neat for you." And he was calling from uh, Estes Auction. So uh, I managed uh, to get a hold of him that following morning. And he says, there's a radio here you've got to have. And I said, why do I got to have it? And he said, because it's called a Marv O'Dine. Oh, wow. <laughs> and sure enough, right here on the front, if you look at it, it does say Marv O'Dine. And I tell you the truth, I, I was... I like that. You reason. did that yourself. No, I yeah. <laughs> uh, and it turned out to be a really nice battery set uh, because, first of all, I love the ones with the meters on it. And those are really nice. And this has got a couple of unique features on it. Uh, first of all, it's, it's got a jack. I think it's a, yeah. it looks like a jack for uh, the B voltage. Uh, and I think it's either you measure it, probably at that point. That's something I've never seen before. And uh, the switch looks like just a lock, a key type switch. I'm not sure about that, but uh, then I'm going to have to find some kind of piece of metal to go in there. So uh, it's a real nice radio. And any money in there, Mark? <laughs> and I'd love to get them this way. It's got all the tubes in it, too. Plus, I'd love to get them this way because they, they have the instruction, the cardboard instructions right inside, uh, the logs, which doesn't look like they've been used, okay? 
So you've got all the information, plus you've got all the batteries uh, connected. So uh -huh. it's, it's a real nice price uh, set. Uh, for $650, I thought it was really well worth it. Oh, yeah. That's what you what was, wasn't it? Right? Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. No, it's quite quite reasonable. And it's got the uh, beautiful, uh, what do you call them, the, the round type coils of not toroids, uh, spiral. 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 Well, they're not quite spirals. Yeah. Binoculars? You'll look at them. Binoculars, but it's like half a binocular. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Binoculars. So, huh? Uh, Beeperman. Beeperman radio work? <laughs> <laughs> so I was having a lot of fun with, with Ray about this. I said, you know, now I always wondered why you had all those ray of that batteries in your house. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I said, hmm. And I was wondering why uh, old bosses has, buys all these Philco's also. <laughs> so uh, one of these days, if you ever get around to it, you know, there's hundreds and hundreds of names of radio, all kinds of dimes out there. You know, so if you ever, if you ever look through that list, and I have a couple of these lists, you're bound, I would say that 25% of the people in here there is a radio with your first or second name in it somewhere. So that's kind of nice to have. Okay. And, and, and the second thing I had, this is a little bit of a surprise. I was in the back there, and this had nothing to do with radio. Well, maybe it does. Uh, and, uh, and Owen was, uh, had these popular communications, you know, sitting in the back. You know. So I was coming through one, and on the cover, I don't know if you can all see this, it's got a guy with a radio in front of a really big control panel. You all see that? And, and it says, uh, engineer at the Prairie Island Nuclear Plant in Minnesota. Okay? And this really, this has got to be a posed picture because I worked with one of these guys, you know, and about 10 feet before you even get into the door, it says, no radios beyond this point. Because you've got to realize all these plants are like, 70, 75 vintage, they're all analog. You can't use radios around them or else you're going you're gonna to drop them. They're going to gonna trip. So here's a guy with one of those short ways right, and he's right at the panel. <laughs> nah, yeah. never in a hundred years. Chernobyl, that's what happened. You mean? <laughs> 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 So, I, so I, thought, I thought that was kind of neat also. It had nothing to do with radios, but, you know. So here it is. Thank you very much. Let's work with Navrov. The Chernobyl guy must be the one. I'm Alex Magoon, and uh, the David Sarnoff Library, we're often blessed with getting things for free rather than even paying a, a song at a, at a flea market, which is especially pertinent when you have a dog. Um, this is uh, one of the weaves, and I assume one of the women might know something about what exactly it is, tatting or weaving or, or whatever particular style. But um, between 1968 and 1979, RCA abandoned the trademark, his master's voice, um, as part of a general trend in the late 60s for all the corporations uh, to try to modernize. I mean, you have to remember, if you were growing up in the 60s, how the graphic design, the styling, you know, changed radically in the late 60s with the, the young generation. And if you had an old AT&T or, or RCA logo, you were beginning to look a little obsolete. And, and the dog listening to a, an a, you know, acoustically uh, hand-wound uh, gramophone does not exactly bespeak blazing modernity if you're a high-tech company. So um, a series of, of CEOs you know, said, we're, we're getting rid of the dog. And then in 1979, um, they got a new fellow. I think his name was uh, Robert Frederick. Um, or Ed Griffin, came in and he said, the dog's coming back, and we're going to update the logo a little bit, clean it up, but we're bringing back Nipper. And that's, you can get an awful lot of the Nipper memorabilia, the RCA family stores cranked the stuff out. There were factories in St. Louis producing big plastic nippers. And within RCA, um, there was this pattern made for this type of, of weave, and this is the second one of these uh, that we've acquired at the library. This is a gift of uh, the granddaughter of a fellow named Sam Phillips, who was one of the engineers at RCA Harrison. And I believe it was his sister who actually 
uh, knit or wove or whatever you call. Um, what's that? Hooking. Hooking. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the hook pattern here. And so I'm just going to suggest that, you know, you're out there at flea markets. There was a pattern. I can't find it. I did come across it in one of the internal magazines for various people who wanted to do hooking to go ahead and do their own version of nipper. As I said, this is the second one. One of the women here at the laboratories made one. Uh, this one comes from Harrison. And I assume there are others out there. And if you can't afford one of the original 26 paintings, uh, this is your, your next best alternative. So, thank you. Um, yeah. <laughs> they did it for free, though. Hi, this is Walt. Uh, straight to uh, you. So the story here tonight with, uh, with the, ben, the Bendix here is that uh, I didn't actually find this radio. My wife did. We were up in... Um, Good wife. Yeah, we were up in, um, what the hell is it, Rhinebeck, New York. And if you're familiar with the area, there are a lot of junk shops in the vicinity. Rhinebeck, Red Hook, mm -hmm. uh, Cold Spring. And uh, in fact, there are a couple of stores there where guys were, uh, one guy had a shelf of uh, All American Fives, different vintages, different uh, different brands, and so on. And, you know, kind of like this kind of condition. And I, I don't know, maybe, you know, you go up there sometime and clean them out. It's a lot of good stuff. But uh, we were walking in one of the places, and uh, I was looking for things, and my wife was too, and somehow or other, I passed this right by because, uh, you know, it just didn't catch my eye. I caught hers because it looked like, I guess, maybe you know, a piece of luggage, and it turned out to be she this. She thought it was a cosmetic case, that's why. Well, that's why she liked it, yeah. And so, at any rate, uh, uh, the price was right, and uh, brought it home, of course, it was dead on arrival. Uh, Basically, it's a uh, it's a five tube. It's got two one T fours. It's got an RF gain section as well as uh, the standard, you know, uh, uh, RF and oscillator uh, uh, and uh, you know one T four, one R five, one T four IF amp, and then a, a one U five, and then a, a three Q four. So the trick was it didn't work. Got it working. Needed some recapping, but I wanted to run it on batteries. Because basically when you're restoring these rigs, you know, and they're designed to run on batteries, you really haven't finished the restoration unless you can get it to run off the grid. And uh, the trick with this was I didn't have paper. So I sent uh, an email to, uh, to, to, to Marty. Marty said, well, call, you know, Aaron and look and see if maybe he's got something. Aaron Hunter, I don't know if he's here tonight. I didn't see him. Uh, he came up empty. Apparently there's a Sam's for it, but nobody can find it. So I gave up on that, and I decided I was just going to try and figure out how to hook up batteries to this thing. And there's a connector, and you're familiar with these. You know there's a connector that goes into a battery pack, but nothing is generally labeled. And in this case, nothing was labeled. The pins were uh, basically unlabeled. And I took a shot, and I said, well, two of the pins were connected together, and the other two pins were coming, you know, from various parts of the chassis. So I said, well, the two pins are together are going to be my negative, you know, B minus and A minus. And then... It dawned on me that you could find out which of the remaining two pins was connected to the A battery if you put your voltmeter, or let's say check for volts, uh, or resistance in this case actually, resistance on the filament of, let's say, the output tube, the 3Q4. So I put my probe, one of my probes, on the pin 7 of the 3Q4, which is one of the filament legs, then I put it into battery position, and then I was able to read. Uh, uh, across the um, uh, the connector and uh, uh, to to ground a completed circuit, and I was able to determine which of the two pins had some resistance, and that was it turned out the the, the A side. So with that, I was able to come up with basically a, a working you know, off the grid and. Uh, But anyway, at any rate, it was a lot of fun to restore, and I uh, just wanted to bring it to show you guys earlier. So, thank you very much. Hi, I'm Ray Chase. Uh, and uh, I kind of settled down into collecting battery superheads. I figured there can't be more than uh, 
a half a dozen or eight different kinds. Uh, <laughs> turns out there's a website called Rolls Royce of Radios, mm -hmm. and uh, they list hundreds. <laughs> I'm, I'm stuck again. <laughs> Most of the battery super hats are eight tubes, uh, uh, a mixer, oscillator, three IFs, and a couple of audios. Uh, some of them have uh, nine or even ten, but I found one with eleven. This one goes with eleven. And this is a mellow heeled eleven uh, super hat. And the coils are mellow formers or mellow couplers. Um, and I picked this up recently in estimates. Uh, all the coils are good except for the output audio, uh, which means i got to do a little uh, deep hiding. But uh, it's one of the better of my battery super hats, and uh, it's uh, very impressive. It's got 11 tubes in it. That's just amazing. Wow. Separate wow. oscillator and uh, format. Right. Oh, what what the What's the tube layout? The tube layout. It's, uh, I'm not sure. I don't have a schematic. Uh, the guy who runs the website, uh, it's one of the few radios he doesn't have a schematic for. I'll probably have to trace it out. So I'm not sure what the, how the tubes are all used. There's no tubes in it? Yeah, there's two. There's a mixer tube. There's a mixer tube. There's, an oscillator, there's at least an oscillator tube, a mixer tube, uh, usually three IFs, uh, a detector, and a couple of audios. The batteries are 150 amp hours? Is that right? Well, it, that's, uh -huh. a, that's a, a, a rechargeable storage battery. It's basically like a car battery. Right. But, uh, you, you know, you're, you're lighting up 11 tubes at a quarter amp of your reach. So, yes. I saw two on off switch. What, what's going on there? I'm not sure. I haven't, I haven't figured out this command. Usually you can, you can shut off uh, one or two of the audio stages to save battery drain. But it's kind of interesting because it's got a meter for the B plus and the A. And this other meter is probably uh, B battery current, which is a rough tuning indicator. So it's a really, really nice set. Mm -hmm. You know what year it's from? These are all around the mid 20s, uh, but these are kits. So, uh, and uh, they were selling them as kits because that guy Sarnoff wouldn't license anybody. So, hmm. the only way you could get a super hat was uh, buy a kit. The only license it was at $50,000. Oh, yeah, well, small, small change. What are some of the controls on the quality? Well, yeah, one controller is like the uh, like the RCA. It's a, it's a, a mixer control, tunable mixer, and a, and a tunable oscillator. So, nearly all of these battery super hats have two controls, and the rest of the controls are either filaments or volume. Okay. I know this is not the most exciting item to show, but just envision that you come back from Florida, you know, into Florida, you get to your home with your $10,000 CT1 color TV, you now want to settle in and watch television, all of a sudden a pesky ham gets on his radio telephone and starts calling CQ. So how do we avoid all that radio interference into a TV set? Uh, the Drake Company and this is back in the 60s, put together, it's a very peculiar type of circuit, very simple and interesting to look at. And what this circuit does is it takes frequencies that are in the high frequency band up to 30 megahertz, and any harmonics that exceed that, it ends up grounding through a series of tuned coils and capacitors. So it's a very simple, very odd looking type of circuitry, but it, it basically will eliminate, if you go above channel one, which was in, when was that, 1947, which was on 50 to 54 megahertz, it would basically ground out to 50 dB or less the signal that uh, was the second harmonic or third harmonic, depending upon, you know, what frequencies you were on. So very, very simple, very interesting looking circuitry. And that concludes, if anybody has any questions, this discussion. <laughs> yeah,
you get one too? Yeah. Here we go. I'm Dick Kerf. I usually don't talk at these because I get intimidated by all the technical stuff. So I made this a little simpler uh, and a little more basic. My, uh, my great uncle, my uncle was in World War I uh, for six weeks. He got halfway across the Atlantic and the boat made a U-turn because the armistice was signed. He came back uh, telling us all he was an expert, not at that time but later, uh, on tubes. Uh, I found out tubes weren't really very important in World War I. Um, he tried to repair radios unsuccessfully because he had a lot in the basement when I was 10 years old later, all of them unrepaired, and one of his favorites was a Majestic. I took it home, and after I drove the mouse out, my mother uh, forgave him. Uh, I got a man to repair it for $25. He built a complete power supply from scratch, uh, designed it and made it, and uh, I still have the radio at work. So I like the Majestics. So, um, recently at the Kutztown, I bought a Majestic. Uh, I didn't bring it because it's a bit large, but um, I brought a part of it. And uh, this is the top of the finial. This is a, a clock radio, a grandfather clock. And uh, therefore, you know, 200 pounds, I wasn't about to bring it up. So the cabinet wasn't bad. This is part that came off. And I brought it with me to the last uh, clinic. And this is, uh, Marv said in the newsletter that he would like to hear show and tell about what we're doing. So this is what I'm doing. And uh, with Aaron beside me, uh, ridiculing me the entire time, I sat at the, uh, the uh, clinic. And uh, he had tested all the tubes in the radio in the Majestic, and he, he pronounced all seven bad. And smiling <laughs> Bob over here said, no, Marin doesn't know how to use a tube tester. So Bob tested him, and he brought some with him. <laughs> Exhibit B, there's a tube. And um, he, uh, he said, some are still good, and some are still bad. So I proceeded to work on it. Now, you didn't get a chance to see Bob's picture. Uh, the first problem I had was a melted transformer. It's a large transformer, about the kind you'd use in an early black and white television, you know, a 30-pound gigantic one. So I needed a tool to uh, remove the wax that had fallen down inside of it, and I used this, and I needed a hammer, too, and I, I didn't bring a hammer with me. So I drove all the wax out, and found the transformer was still good, right? You saw that. And um, I had a problem, and I got a lot of encouragement, too, from this one right here. Uh, Marty came up to me, and... Uh, uh, he says, oh, no, 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 Majestics, oh, I hate Majestics. He says, oh, I pop metal inside of them. He says, you'll have trouble with the tuning arrangement. No, no, I found a tool <laughs> to work on the tuning. See? Yeah, grab hold of it now, Marty, and I just twist it really hard, and you can, you can tune the radio with this. Okay? Uh, I found that Majestic used uh, uh, latex-covered wires, and latex, if you ever leave a glove out or anything, uh, it, uh, it hardens and uh, disintegrates, so... Every wire had to be replaced. Uh, the, the, the tuning system wouldn't work. Uh, all seven tubes were more or less bad, nothing really major, of course. Transformer had melted inside of it. And the last thing was it had a catacomb inside of it. We've heard about that tonight. Oh, yeah. And uh, everything inside the catacomb uh, was bad. Uh, I did have a uh, wiring diagram for you. You'll notice it's wrinkled. It's from frustration. What model? Um, it's a Model 20. Oh, 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 underneath. They're absolutely horrible, okay, mm -hmm. because you have to... This is number three. Right. The other thing? Yeah, this is number three. <laughs> <laughs> number two was Ray Chase. Where's Ray? <laughs> he over there, he's, oh, no, not Majestic. I hate Majestic. This is number three. Okay. Here's, here's the picture of, of the thing, and uh, it's about as fuzzy as you can get. And it, you see I have some red marks on it, because when you take the bottom off and release the screws... The transformers fall out, breaking all the wires, and they're not color-coded now. They're all made of latex. And when the transformers fall out, well, you know, you don't have to figure out where they, they go on side of it. And, um, and the rest of it. And I'm back there buying capacitors. What's the bet that I'll never make it work again? Let's see. All the hands go up. Every hand. Okay, you're right. Okay. That's it. That's all I have. Thank you. <laughs> We have a question. When I first started uh, collecting radios many years ago, yeah. I was at my first spot meet, and I started asking questions, you know, and they said, well, you know, look for this, look for this, but whatever you do, don't buy a Majestic. <laughs> <laughs> when I went to Kutztown uh, three years ago, this uh, teenager or young guy came by, and he said, my great uncle had a workshop behind the house, and he had Majestics in it. And so 
When I went home with seven of them, they called me Mr. Majestic. So if you need parts, I've got all, I think they're only made about seven models, at least the early series. And I have parts for all of them. Trust me. Just parts. Thank you. <laughs> Right. Anybody else? Okay, we're running late, so we'll get right to the auction. Bill, are you busy over there? If you could hold that, but be real careful with the wire. No, 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 just make sure the wire doesn't come loose. Now listen, this is not, not exactly portable. We've got big cards. We're going to try and work this uh, civilized manner, but the uh, monies for this will go to the club. Uh, we've uh, managed to uh, procure 50% to the club and 50% to the uh, estate of Vladimir Stein. Now, Vladimir Stein was a radio repair TV man in Patterson, New Jersey in the 1960s and 70s. He passed away in the 80s. And uh, this is uh, some of the remnants what were left in his house that was cleaned out uh, last uh, two months ago. And very kindly, his daughter, Bonnie Stein, called yeah, the club, yeah, keep that and since I'm the most northern uh, region uh, in the uh, yeah, people with member, I went over and uh, took care of it for her. So it was very kind of her to uh, call us up and let us know that this stuff was available. And again, she was agreeable to the 50% to us and 50% to herself. So, we do have our bid cards. Does everybody have a bid card? Yeah, we're going to do it. Okay. Well, you have to so yell. We're gonna I'm do. getting your best side, Joe. Oh, I'm right, sorry. Now, look, things are not, they're not in order, okay? We happen to have a list. You don't have a list. That's fine. It's not that big a deal, okay? All right, we're going to start off here with these tubes, all right? What we're going to do is we'll do a, a choice. Choice. Okay? So we've got uh, three... Uh, uh, Receptacles of tubes. <laughs> one of them is a box. One of them the is a, a choice planter. of receptacle or choice of tube. And then one of them is a, uh, a partial cigar box. All right. So we're going to bid on choice. Okay. All right. Who will open it for a dollar? Who's got a buck? Who's got two? Who's got two? Who's got two? Uh -oh. Oh, uh -oh. Who's got three? Who's got three? Two looking for three. Two looking for three. We got three. Who's got four? Who's got five? Six? Seven? Who's got seven? Who's got eight? Who's got eight? Eight dollars going once. Eight. Who's got nine? Who's got ten? Who's got ten? Nine dollars going once. Twice. You're nine. Okay. Marty, you choose. The planner. The planter. Okay. There you go. Nine dollars. You don't want to do all the stock? Okay. Now we have two more left. Who's got a dollar for what's left? One choice. All right. Who's got two? Who's got two? Who's got two? Who's got three? All right. Who's got four? Who's got four? Who's got five? Who's got six? Who's got seven? Who's got eight? All right. Seven dollars. Seven dollars going once. Seven dollars going twice. All right, sold to Darren. Choice. What do you want? The number. Number. One number. Oh, 25. I'm sorry. All right. We have the uh, the small uh, miniature tubes. Who's got a buck for those? Who's got a buck? A dollar. Who's got two? Anybody got two? Dollar going once, twice, sold. Number one to one. One to one. Wow. All right, moving right along, we have a vintage scope. All right, we've got a Heathkit scope here. Untested. On has the five inch scope. Has a good probe. Good probe. Good probe. Good probe. Nice knobs. Okay. Who's got a dollar? Heath Kit. Who's got a dollar? One dollar. One dollar. Who's got a dollar? Are they airplane knobs? Yes. Is there anything you want them to be? Who's got a dollar? <laughs> Who's got a dollar? Come on, guys. Who's got a buck? Come on. Who's got a buck? Who's got a dollar? Buck. Buck. Right. Here we go. Buck. You got a box. Yeah, the right. knobs. Put the knobs. Sure. Knobs here. Use it on radio. Yeah. I hear they're airplane knobs. They're airplane knobs. Yeah. Right. Dollar going once, twice. Yeah, sold this out. One dollar. Okay. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> All right. Here we have General Tube Caddy. Full of tubes. Full of General Electric. Full of tubes. Who's got a one dollar. Who's got duck? Who's got two? Dollar. Who's got two? And we got two? Dollar going two. Who's got three? 
got four. Who's got four? Who's got four? Three dollars. Going once, twice. Number one. You? Yeah. Okay. All right. Moving right. He's on the. It's BQ five. Yep. Yeah. Moving right along. We have the mystery case. I took this out of the basement, guys. Dirty. Okay. What's in the display case is found in the display case. What the display case was used. For, I don't know. Someone said it was a pie case. Someone said it was for uh, needles. Someone said it was for. It was by Simple Simon, know. the pieman. Simple Simon, the pieman. Very good. Okay. Now, whatever's in there. So we put this plate. It's a pie case. Okay. I would think it would have some bent in a pie case, but. Okay. Who's got a dollar? Box. Who's got two? Who's got two? Three? Who's three? Right, who's four? Stand up on my sofa. Five. Five. Seven. Who's seven? Eight. Eight, Joe. Who's nine? Who's ten? Who's eleven? Who's twelve? Who's thirteen? Who's fourteen? Who's fifteen? Who's sixteen? Who's seventeen? Who's eighteen? Who's eighteen? Who's nineteen? Even twenty. One. 22, 21, $21. Anybody got 22? $21 going once, twice, sold to you. John. Just remember what number. Number. Nine. Number remember nine. what you bought. Remember what you guys bought. Did yeah. I buy a little yes, it is. All right. Here. Listen, guys, we got an auction going on. We have an auction. An auction. If you want to talk, please. Genuine 1940s, 50s jobs with with a plastic wash bin. Dave? Dave? Who's got a dollar? Who's got two? Who's got two? Dollar, dollar going. Dollar going twice. Sold. Okay. Separate. All right. Yeah. Uh, low. What are these? Arc low five. Uh, low frequency arc five receivers. Uh, low low broadcast man. Different what? parts. Piece. Stuff's coming off them. Okay. We got bottoms. We got, we got tubes. We got parts. Okay. Who's got a dollar? Who's got a dollar? <laughs> Who's got a dollar? Who's got a? Come on, John. Who's got a dollar? John. I don't have a dollar. Yeah. He lost a fifty-fifty. That's why. Come <laughs> <laughs> on. The parts are worth that. Like tubes. Come on. Come on, guys. <laughs> Those aren't the Come PHF on. Oh. Dollar. Yeah. You, not you. my. Uh, for a dollar? You need those. Yeah. Uh, Just for that? Stereo. Make it a box slot. We've got a dot. You know, we've got a With the R5, three boxes of parts. Needles. Choice? No, the whole damn thing. <laughs> we've got offsets. Oh, we've got clips. Yeah. We've got socks and sockets. All sorts of good stuff. For all of this. Oh, who's got two? <laughs> who's got three? Who's got three? Who's got three? Who's got five? Five? Six? Seven? Eight? Nine? Ten? Nine dollars. Nine dollars. Ten? Nine dollars. Go once. Sold to Darren. All right. And that. What's your number? Twenty-five. Twenty-five. We have a Oh, battery, uh, it's a power uh, six volt battery radio. Uh, who's got a dollar? Who's got, got a buck? It. Who's got two? Who's got three? Two dollars. Twice? Sold in there. Number? Six. Six. Who is Emerson? Five forty. 541. Okay. Backlit dial. Okay. Who uh, pretty much will be there. Just like my dog said. Okay. Who's got a dollar? Dollar. Who's got a oh, Who's got two? Who's got two? Two. Five. Seven. Seven. 